Shalom, Barakata Yahweh, Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Waha Raka Kwedash. Double honors to the men who taught me this truth, the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Also, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord, Yehovah Hashem, Yehovah Shai of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. And those that shall not be left neither root nor branch is the proud and those that do wickedly. That's why we want to pray to continue upon the straight and narrow path. That straight and narrow path leads to salvation because in the day that shall burn as an oven, which is speaking about the total destruction upon the soils of America by the way of 200 million intercontinental ballistic missiles, that's the day or the ultimate day, should I say, of the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, when he allowed our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, to come and to bring destruction upon the proud and those that do wickedly. Yahweh Shai is going to be accompanied by the host of heaven, which is the army of heaven. And that consists of the angels and also 200 million intercontinental ballistic missiles. And we want to be delivered out of that total destruction that shall come upon the soils of America. And in order to be delivered in that day, you must be a part of the elect of the nation of Israel. Those are the ones that Yahweh Shai is coming to deliver in that day. Verse 2 tells us, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness, which is our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. So we want to be a part of that number who fear Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, because that fear is going to bring a reward, which is salvation, and that salvation shall be upon high. We're going to be just like Noah in the times where the Most High was fed up with the wickedness upon the planet. He destroyed everything upon the planet with his first cleansing agent, which is water. In these times that we're living in, he's going to destroy this place with his second cleansing agent, which is fire. That's why the scripture says the day that cometh that shall burn as an oven. All right. And once again, that's going to take place by the way of those 200 million missiles touching down upon the soils of America. Once again, we want to um, continue in the faith, continue in the fear in order for us to receive deliverance in that day. Just like in the days of Noah, the book of Genesis chapter 7. In verse 16, it says, And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as the Most High have commanded him. It says, And the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bared up the ark and it was lifted up above the earth so just like in the time of noah you had to be on top of the waters all right in the ark to receive deliverance from that destruction by water in these days and times that we're living in in order for you to receive salvation you're going to have to be lifted up above these waters which is the lake of fire created by the way of 200 million intercontinental ballistic missiles, okay? You're going to have to be lifted up 
all right, over these floods or these waters, which shall be fire, which is the second cleansing agent, all right? And how is that going to take place? You must be what? Beamed up into a chariot. That's why we have the greatest hope upon the planet. The hopes of being delivered in that day by getting beamed up upon what the world deems as UFOs, which are really the vehicle of the elect's salvation. Okay? That's what Yahweh Shai is going to come back to deliver us in. As the book of Acts, chapter 1, and verse 9 tells us, it says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. All right, so this is Yahweh Shai going into heaven, all right, the ascension, okay? Verse 10, it says, And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which was actually two angels, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. All right. So the way that Yahweh Shai ascended. All right. That's the same way he's going to descend. And he's going to descend with all power, might and glory. The scripture says that he's not going to meet this world as a man. He's going to come as a super angelical force ready to destroy and deliver, okay? And he's going to be riding upon a huge fathership. And the rest of the Allahayim, which is the armies of heaven, all right, the angels, they're going to be riding upon chariots. Yahweh Shai and the huge fathership and the rest of the angels are going to be shooting concentrated beams of fire, all right, which are laser beams in layman's terms to what? The scroy the proud and those that do wickedly accompanied by the way of 200 million missiles. There is not going to be any other escape except upon a chariot in that day, just like in the time of Noah. There was no other way to escape the flood but to be in the ark. The only way that you're going to escape this lake of fire, all right, is to be in a chariot. And Yahweh Shai is going to descend the same way he ascended upon a cloud, okay? Which a cloud is what? A dark saying for what the world deems as UFOs, okay? The scripture tells us in the book of Proverbs chapter 18, in verse 10, it says, The name of the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. All right? And we can determine who is the potential righteous right now because only a small number is running to the names Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shah, while others are rejecting those names. All right? And those names is a strong tower. Let's look up. tower because we know the word strong means what might strength this is the word tower in the strong's h4026 it says elevated stage all right a raised bed all right your place of rest on high all right rest from um your yourselves which is this body that we're living in Rest from wickedness, spearheaded by Esau, and played out in America, all right? Rest from the two-thirds, and also, all right, a safe haven from the destruction, okay? And the scripture says, elevated stage, raised bed, meaning it's going to be on high, all right? That's what you do when you go into a tower. 
You go into a tower to escape the danger below, such as floods. And that's what we're going to do, Lord willing, if we're part of that number, if we endure unto the end. The scripture says, he that endure unto the end, the same shall be what? Saved. And that's going to be saved from the destruction. And that salvation is going to come by us having a seat upon the vehicle of the elect's salvation. All right. The scripture says in a dark saying, the clouds, which are the chariots of the Most High. And that starts with what? Knowing the names, believing in the names, putting all of your stock into the names because they are your strong tower. That's going to be your way out. Your faith, all right, and your works that you have put towards those names and in those names. The scripture tells us in Isaiah chapter 31 and verse 5, it says, as birds flying, so will the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah of hosts, defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it. And passing over, he will preserve it. So this is that aerial salvation that the elect is going to receive. All right? Because we know birds fly in the air. All right? It says, as birds flying, so will the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai of hosts, defend Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. All right. In this case, it's not just Israel because Israel is the people. All right. In this case, it's the elect of Israel that the Lord is going to deliver or defend. All right. It says, as birds flying, so will the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, of hosts, defend Jerusalem. Defending, also he will deliver it. So we're going to have a defense. But in that defense, also deliverance is going to come. It says, and passing over. So this deliverance is going to be on high. And passing over, he will preserve it. Preserve us where? In the chambers, in the chariots. The scripture says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, in verse 20, it says, come, my people. All right. We know Israel is the people of, of the Lord, but the elect out of Israel in this case. This is who the scripture is speaking of. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. Okay, it says, and shut thy doors behind thee, hide thyself as it were for a little moment, meaning that one hour that Revelation 18 speaks of, that one hour is going to take one hour for America to be totally annihilated off of the face of the earth. That's that little moment until the indignation be overpassed, meaning the Lord's anger. OK, those chambers are going to be those chariots, which is that hiding hiding place. And that's going to be on high, just like in the time of Noah. All right. The Lord is going to come and deliver the elect. All right. The book of First Thessalonians. Chapter four. And verse, I'm going to start at verse 15. It says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, which is the elect, the remnant, until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, meaning those that have already gave up the gold sore. Their spirit has already went back to the Most High because they completed their mission in this work. And their works are going to follow them. So we won't prevent them, meaning we won't come before them. It says, for the Lord himself shall descend, just like we read in the book of Acts, the first chapter. All right. He ascended and the two guys that stood by them in white apparel which were two angels, told them the same Yahweh Shai was going to what? Come back the way he left. So the scriptures is telling us, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. 
All right. Let's get that shout that the Lord is going to descend with in the book of Revelation, chapter 18. And verse four, it says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, so this voice is coming from heaven, meaning above us. All right. Come out of her, meaning America, my people, meaning the elect of Israel, that ye be not partakers of her sins, America, and that ye receive not of her plagues, meaning America. And what's that main and final plague? The day that shall burn as an oven by the way of 200 million intercontinental ballistic missiles and concentrated beams of fire coming out of those chariots. This is that voice from heaven. This is that shout from on high, all right? First Thessalonians 4 and 16 again, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of the most high and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. See that? The same way that Yahweh left is the way that he's going to come back. But he left as a humble lamb. When he come back, he's going to come back as a super angelical force, ready to destroy and to deliver, riding upon a huge cloud, which is a huge fathership. All right. It says, then we which are alive and remain the elect, those that shall endure unto the end shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. The scripture keeps telling us that this is going to be an aerial thing caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Why? Because the law, statutes and commandments are going to be written on our inward parts. We're going to be perfected. We're going to lose these bodies and get our new celestial body, which is able to house the law, statutes and commandments. All right. Within us. That's going to make us perpetual rulers. That's why it says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. It says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And these are words of comfort, knowing that we have a big chance of being a part of the elect and to be delivered by our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, out of this upcoming destruction. All right. The scripture tells us about that aerial salvation, once again, in the book of Revelation 15, starting at verse 1, and this is the vision that was given unto John of Patmos, and John of Patmos didn't know it, but he was also seeing himself in this vision. It says, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, meaning the complete destruction, for in them is filled up the wrath of the Most High. And we all know when the Most High wrath is kindled, but a little, everything is terrible. But this lets us know that this is speaking of the total annihilation of America, the total destruction of America, because these are the uh, 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 seven last plagues. It says, in them was filled up wrath from the Most High. So this is total destruction. That's why it's going to take one hour, all right, for America to be destroyed. Verse 2, And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, which is the ozone layer, all right? Remember, this is an aerial thing, this vision that John of Patmos is receiving. It's an aerial thing. He's seeing this from above, the same way Noah was caught up. All right. Same way we're going to meet the Lord in the air. John of Patmos is seeing this in the vision that was given unto him. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And that fire, all right, is going to be the fire from those intercontinental ballistic missiles. It's just like you're capturing fire in a glass bottle. It says, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, those that uh, the Most High is going to be uh, uh, allowing Yahweh Shai to deliver, it says, which is the elect, and them that 
had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass. See that? Having the harps of the Most High. This is that aerial salvation. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of the Most High, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord Power Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of Saints. All right? And this is why this prophecy, all right, we want to be a part of it on the right-hand side, all right? We want to be those that shall go to the right hand of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh, which represents what? Salvation. Scripture says in St. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 29, it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, all right, these times that we're about to go into, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, meaning Esau. It says, and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven, which is our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, all an aerial thing. It says, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, the chariots, with power and great glory. That's Yahweh Shai coming back as a super angelical force, all right, to destroy the proud and those that do wickedly and to deliver the elect of the nation of Israel. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. Lord willing, I pray that this made sense and that this was edifying. Shalom.